Can compressed recordings ever be used to voice loudspeakers? What an interesting question. This is from Ismo in Hawaii, my birthplace. I was born on Eva Beach uh, on the same island that uh, Ismael is uh, in um, Oahu. Okay, do you ever use compressed music or modern music to help in the voicing of a component? I ask this because while I think good recordings sound great in hi-fi systems, some of us like modern music that may not be the best recordings, but we still like to enjoy our hi-fi. And some equipment are so revealing that it's impossible to listen to modern music. I think the balance of musicality and detailed sound is very important. Thank you. Well, Ismail, you have hit on a big sore spot. I, that's a rough one because I call it the double-edged sword, right? The more revealing your system is, the more layers of gauze and, 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 and whatever is holding you back from seeing into the music that we remove, the closer we get to the source of music. And if that music is compressed and glaring and nasty and bright, uh, you'll hear it even more glaring, nasty, and bright. And it's less enjoyable to wear a system uh, of speakers or, uh, you know, an entire electronic setup masks some of that and tones it down a little bit. Then it's probably easier to listen to. And I struggle with this all the time. But let me give you some, some hope because having done this for so many years, I've come almost full circle on this. On the very best systems out there, bad recordings don't grab hold of you and shake you around in ways that are not pleasant. Hearing that back doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I'm struggling here for the words to explain this a little better. If we were to divide systems into, let's say, three different levels. One is a ho-hum oatmeal system where everything plays through it. Nothing is great, nothing is bad, everything's just kind of mediocre. Right? That, that'll be over in this corner. That'll be A. B is a really good, highly resolving system that every pinpoint problem and wonderful aspect is revealed in all of its glory or horror. And that's what most of us for high-end systems have. And that'll be B. And then C is yet another level of extraordinary performance, still revealing, yet that reveal does not interfere with the electronics, where the sound that's playing through there doesn't upset anything in the system, and you hear it for what it is. So we're a little closer, A, B, or C, okay? And the first time I ever heard a C-rated system was my first visit to Harry Pearson's house many, many years ago, HP of the Absolute Sound. And he had a close uh, distance system, kind of, I, I don't want to call it near field, let's call it medium field system. And this was my first time hearing the Infinity IRS system that I now have here that any of you are welcome to come check it out and listen to it. I have the IRS 5 and people from all over the world come to hear this system and for good reason. It's, it's an amazing system, beating my watch against the thing there. Uh, Arnie had, uh, Harry had the IRS-3, the, the, the precursor to the 5, but still, terrific system. And Stan and I had gone and sat in there, and the first time I ever heard a system like this, it was so elevated above anything else I'd ever heard that it transcended A and B. So imagine 
listening to a record album, because that's all we had back then. This had to be in the mid 70s? No, it had to be 79, 80, somewhere around there, because I don't think the IRSs came out till the early 80s. So he, I think he had a precursor to it. And the record noise, the ticks, the pops, the hiss, the scraping of the needle was completely separate from the music. And I could hear it as a separate entity that I could catalog in my head and put over here. Ah, there's that sound. And that surface noise had nothing to do with the music. When I normally listen to an album, even on the best system, they're integrated together. The surface noise of the record is integrated into the music and becomes sort of part of it, sort of modulating it, if you will. It, th I can't separate the two. But on the C system, on the very best systems, you can separate the grunge, the surface noise, and it can present itself in a way that is separate and distinct from the music. And that's really the holy grail of what we'd like to do. Anyway, long-winded story of, of perspective in this area. So the last part I will say is that, yes, I routinely have my sets of compressed, um, not terribly compressed, but a lot of modern music. I do use a lot of modern music, and only the very best attempts at our electronics and our speakers that we're designing can reproduce that modern music in a way that gets my toe tapping in a way that is like, oh, this is fun. I, I get it. I see what the musician was having. One, one of the, my favorite tracks is by the, I think it's, she's an Australian, uh, Lord and it's called Tennis Court. Now on most systems, when you listen to that track, Tennis Court, it's synths and stuff like that, it can get a little like woo when it plays loud. It's, it's, it's compressed and harsh and bright. But on a really good system, if you got everything right, it can sound pretty amazing. So yeah, I do use that as a means of extremes that I, because I, I too, feel cheated when I can't listen to all the music I want to. If there's something musically great and it's such a bad recording that it stops me from listening to it, that is a crime and a shame and I don't like it. All right. Hope I answered your question. Thanks. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.